All right, I think we're live. Um, thanks everyone for joining us um, for another Google Plus Hangout on Air from the Minnesota Zoo. We're really excited um, to chat with you guys today about lemurs. Um, we have a really special guest with us today. Zookeeper Kathy is back to talk about these amazing animals. And um, we're just really excited to be part of the Connected Classrooms program and chat with everyone about lemurs today. Um, but before we get started, um, we thought it'd be really timely to go ahead and show a really cool trailer of a new movie that's out exclusively at the IMAX. So if you go to your local IMAX, um, this should be playing, and it's the Island of Lemurs, Madagascar 3D. So we're going to go ahead and get started by playing that clip. Let me go ahead and get started. Well, I think that looks like a pretty cool movie. I don't know about everyone else, um, but I'm definitely excited to go out and check out Island of Lemurs at Madagascar, only exclusively at IMAX. Um, so go check that out. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started about talking about the lemurs that we have here at the Minnesota Zoo. And to help us with that, we have zookeeper Kathy. Um, Hi, guys. Hey, Kathy. Um, and where are you right now? I'm on the Tropics Trail at the Minnesota Zoo. Um, we have several different really cool areas here at the zoo, everything from northern animals to animals that live in the tropical areas of the world. So along this trail, we have animals like lemurs, because lemurs live in Madagascar, and that is one of the most tropical areas in the world. It's pretty warm there. Um, there's lots of different types of habitat there, anything from rainforest to desert to spiny forests to uh, big mounts. So there's a lot of different kinds of habitat in Madagascar. So there's a lot of different kinds of lemurs. What we have here at the zoo is our red ruffed lemurs. Now the red ruffed lemurs live in the northeast part of Madagascar. And if you guys already know where Madagascar is, it's off of the coast of Africa, the fourth largest island in the world. There's about 21 million people that live there and they live with a lot of different kinds of lemurs. There's actually more than a hundred different kinds of lemurs. So here we've got just one example, the red ruffed lemurs. You guys can kind of tell why they get their name, right? They've got nice fluffy red fur. They've also got a really long tail. You can't really see it right now because our uh, female here has it all curled up around her body, but they use that tail for balance. These guys live in the trees. They're arboreal. 
So you know how on Arbor Day we celebrate trees? Arbor means tree, so arboreal animals live up in the trees. They do a lot of climbing around on logs, branches, vines, all that sort of stuff way up high in the canopy. And they usually don't go to the ground at all. So they have that nice long tail that they use just for balance. You guys may notice that they have pretty cool eyes too. These guys have pretty good vision, but the, one of the best senses that they have is their sense of smell. You can maybe see that these guys have a really long nose. Usually animals that have a long nose have a really good sense of smell. So these guys do definitely have a long nose. They use that long nose and that good sense of smell to smell out ripe fruits in the forest. That's what these guys like to eat. Mostly fruits, 75% of their diet. And the rest of the time they eat things like leaves, they like sweet stuff like flowers, tree sap, um, good stuff like that. But here at the zoo, they get lots of variety of different kinds of fruits and vegetables, as well as leaves. We've got a couple of examples here of what they like to eat. Now these are called leaf eater biscuits. These are kind of like dog food or cat food that you'd buy in the store for your uh, pets that you have at home, but they're called leaf eater biscuits. So they're made for animals that live in zoos that eat leaves. So they're really nice and nutritious, and uh, these guys like them. Um, I've tried them. I don't think they taste very good, but these guys really seem to like them a lot. And again, they're leaf feeder biscuits that we feed to primates. Lemurs are primates, so they're related to monkeys and apes, but they are a little bit different. They're prosimians. That means pre-monkey. So they evolved before some of the other monkeys and apes. Lemurs have a really interesting story that you kind of saw in that IMAX trailer. It's thought that the way that the lemurs got to Madagascar was on floating rafts of vegetation. So when they left Africa a long time ago, they got to Madagascar, and there really wasn't any other animals there to compete with. So lemurs evolved into all sorts of different kinds of lemurs, things that eat, it, eat fruit, things that eat leaves, animals that live in the desert, animals that live in the tropical areas. So they were able to evolve into all those more than 100 types of lemurs that I mentioned earlier because Madagascar is such a cool place with a lot of cool resources. Here at the zoo, along with the leaf eater biscuits, they get lots of fruits and vegetables, and like I said, leaves. They get lettuce here at the zoo. This is romaine lettuce, which is one of their favorites, but they also get endive and uh, kale, a bunch of different kinds of lettuce, which they really do like a lot. They get things like apples, like you guys probably eat at home. They also get some vegetables, like carrots, but their favorite things here at the zoo, bananas and grapes. And you can maybe see that that's their favorite things. Right? I've got our female here. She's nice and close looking at this bag of treats that I have, hoping that maybe later on she'll get a little bit of a snack. I think she's probably uh, pretty right in that regard. I'll give them a little bit of a snack at the end of the hangout. We have three lemurs in this exhibit, one female and two males. Really, our female is the one that's right up close here. I don't think that you can see... The other guys, I can kind of see them, but they're a little bit difficult to see. We make our habitats at the zoo really natural for the animals. So you can see they've got vines to climb on, branches to climb on, and a lot of green uh, plants and stuff like that. Where these guys live, they would have some of these plants. There's a plant here called the traveler's palm, and that is actually a plant that's native to Madagascar. So it's right where these guys would live. I think maybe um, Sadika here is going to show off one really cool thing that they have. They have thumbs on their hands like we do, but they've also got thumbs on their feet so they can hang upside down like this. Maybe I can get her to hang all the way upside down by trying to uh, show her this grape. There she goes. All the way upside down, hanging from those feet. And don't worry, I'll give her this grape later so that she doesn't get too mad at me. You can also see that she's got that nice long tail behind her. Again, they use that for balance. They do have a pretty soft and fluffy coat, even though they live in the more tropical area of Madagascar. That can help protect them from bugs and insects that live in the forest. But really, these guys don't have a whole lot of predators. That's another reason why they've been able to evolve into so many different kinds of lemurs. I was really lucky a few years ago, and I got to go to Madagascar to study lemurs. What I did was I asked the zoo for a grant 
to send me so I can be able to do some studies. And I got that grant, so they helped pay for me to go over to Madagascar and do some studies with lemurs. I went to the southeastern part of Madagascar, which is not where these guys are found, but there's still lemurs there. There's four different kinds of lemurs. So what I got to do when I was over there was I got to do behavioral observations on lemurs. And that is that we would truck through the forest trying to find lemurs with our guides. Um, these guides were from Madagascar, so they were really good at their job, and they could always find us the lemurs. And then we would sit and watch them, and we would write down things like, are they sleeping? Are they just resting? Are they eating? Are they moving around? We'd write all that stuff down to help us better understand lemur behavior. We'd also pay attention, too, to the type of trees that they were sitting in and the type of trees that were around where they were sitting in to kind of get an idea of what kind of habitat these guys like. We would also go out at night to look for lemurs and look for things like frogs and lizards and snakes, insects, all sorts of stuff like that. We would kind of pick through the leaf litter and find frogs, and then we would try to identify the frogs. I don't know if you guys can hear a little bit of chuckling noise from our female here. She, these guys do have quite a range of vocalizations. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But again, when I was in Madagascar, it's, um, we lived kind of a primitive life there. I slept in a tent for four weeks. We didn't have electricity or running water. So my shower was a bucket of water and a cup that I poured over my head. No electricity. Um, we drank <laughs> rainwater. We did have a well that we could pump water from, so that was a nice perk for us to have. And we ate a lot of rice. Rice is pretty much the main staple of food for the people in Madagascar, and they grow a lot of rice there. Madagascar is kind of in trouble. There's a lot of habitat loss there because there are so many people. And when there's habitat loss and people cut down trees, then the habitat for the lemurs goes away. So most lemurs are threatened or endangered. So kind of bad news for lemurs, but there are a lot of people who are really trying hard to save the lemurs, like the Minnesota Zoo. When they send me to Madagascar, I got to help lemurs. I got to help with the observations of lemurs and help advance the scientific study of lemurs. We've got Sadiqa right up here again. I'm going to see if I can make um, get her to make some of that noise that they, uh, they like to make. Maybe not. They will often take the noise if there's a different sound or a different thing that they see in the building that's a little bit unusual for them. I'm trying to make just a little bit of noise. Oh, Looks I got like one of our males to come out here. Yeah, exactly. He's like, what is going on? <laughs> and I hear a little bit of grumbling. Come on, guys. Well, if they do start making that noise, it's very loud. You guys will know right away because it is <laughs> a super loud noise. Not going to do it. They make vocalizations for a couple of different reasons. One is it's a territorial call. So they want all the other lemurs in the, in the forest to know that they're over here. And that can help prevent a face-to-face -face conflict, which... You know, they really don't want. They don't want to fight. They just want to live in their separate territories out in the forest. Like I said, they can also make the noise if there is a strange um, sound or something strange that they see. It kind of... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> like I said, it's pretty loud, and you guys probably didn't even get the full effect of it. That noise can travel for up to a half a mile in the forest. <laughs> and then <laughs> some of our other primates also start making noise when these guys make noise. It can be kind of a chain reaction for everybody. Um, the other thing I was saying is it could be kind of an alarm call. Like I said, if they see or hear something strange out in the forest, they might make that noise as well. <laughs> Like with our other primates that are vocalizing right now, they'll maybe respond a little bit to that. They can also do it if there's a little bit of a squabble between, the two, between a group of them, whether it's over a nice juicy thing. 
boy, now I can't get him to shut up. <laughs> Whether it's over a nice juicy fig or a nice place to sleep, a, some, uh, you know, a nice comfy warm spot, these guys really do like to sit in the sun. And when they do that, they like to do what we call basking, where they show their tummy up to the sun. <laughs> I think they're going to be making that noise for a while. <laughs> to try and get warm. Um, but they really do like to do that. So they do have their favorite spots where they like to sit as well. Like I said, we have three lemurs in here. You can see the two. They've got lots and lots of different kinds of vocalization. So with uh, the big loud noise, you've heard different kinds of vocalizations in there. Sadiqa just made another kind of a vocalization. They'll also do a kind of grumbly noise in their throat. <laughs> These lemurs are probably the most vocal of all the lemurs. Um, other lemurs do make different kinds of noises, but not quite this loud. If you do go see the movie Madagascar, um, the lemurs of Madagascar movie in IMAX, you will hear another kind of lemur that's really loud called an indri. Now an indri is the largest species of lemur and they've got an amazing call. It's kind of a haunting, high-pitched call. <laughs> it kind of sounds like the call of a humpback whale. Now I said that the indri is the largest species of lemur. The smallest species of lemur is called a mouse lemur. And it's called that because it's only as big as a mouse, about as big as my thumb, and that's when they're fully grown. That's the smallest primate in the world. It's called a mouse lemur. So there's a wide range of sizes, colors, shapes of lemurs out in Madagascar, along with a huge variety of other animals, like I talked about, frogs, chameleons, um, every kind of reptile. There's other kinds of mammals, too, like tenrix, which we have here at the zoo, which are kind of like a hedgehog. They've also got a lot of bugs, like Madagascar hissing cockroaches, which we also have here at the zoo, and some tortoises, which we have here at the zoo as well. We've got a lot of different animals that come from Madagascar here at the Minnesota Zoo that you can come and see here on the Tropics Trail. Thanks so much, Kathy. Yeah. And that's all really interesting information, and I think um, just where we are with the time, I think we're going to start getting into some Q&A, if that's okay. Perfect. Um, and so... At this time, any, any of the classrooms that are on, feel free to unmute your microphone, um, and we'll kind of go down the line um, and get um, some questions answered from you guys. And if you are not joining us live and you're just watching, um, feel free to use um, hashtag lemurhoa. It's uh, right here on my screen, um, so you can kind of see that. Um, feel free to use that on Twitter. We're at MNZU. Otherwise, feel free to use the Q&A app um, that's on here at Google+, and we'll be getting questions through there as well. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Does anyone um, from Miss Alicia Parker's class, do they have any questions? Let's see here. It looks like we do have a question. I'm just going to make sure that it's unmuted. All right. I think you guys are good to go. How do they never miss when they jump from tree to tree? I didn't quite understand that, Ken. Can I hear that question again? How do they never miss when they jump from tree to tree? Kathy, I think and she's how asking really um, how they are, yeah, how able they're to jump from tree to tree without missing the branch. Does that make any sense? I'm not hearing anything right now. Sorry, guys. Hmm. So you can't, Kathy, you can't hear what we're saying? Interesting. Josh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't hear Josh anymore. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, let's see here. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties. I hope I didn't turn something on or off, did I? I'm not sure. We're going to try to... Um, fix this technical Sorry, guys, we're going to maybe try to um, hook up something else, see if that works. Yeah. Josh, you can answer all the questions, right? <laughs> I'm not the lemur expert here, um, but I can definitely right, let's try. let's try something else here. Um, so while they're fixing that, I think um, one of the ways that they have such great accuracy um, when they're jumping from tree to tree is Kathy, zookeeper Kathy, was talking about how they have hands, basically um, really great strength in their hands and in their feet. 
and they have a really great tail for balance. And so when they're jumping from tree to tree, they're actually able to use all of those different parts of their body to make sure that they, one, are able to reach the tree, and then two, that they're able to secure onto the tree and not fall off, because um, their hands and their feet are both really strong, um, and so are, and their tails, like I said, are really great for balance. So that was a really great question. So I think we're going to head over to, um, let's see here, they're having some issues over there. I think we're going to head on over to um, Miss Gina Felton's class in Iowa. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, we do. Let's see who's up first. Hunter, you're up first. Loud. How far can lemurs hear? How far can lemurs hear? You know what? That is an excellent question. Kathy, were you able to hear that question? Kathy, can you hear yet? I think she's still having some technical difficulties over there. Um, I think that's a really great question. As you heard um, Kathy say that that vocalization that they're able to make, um, they can, people can hear that for over half a mile away. So I would um, want to make a really great guess um, that lemurs are able to hear probably anywhere between a half a mile to a mile away, um, depending on how loud the sounds are, just because they're going to be able to have to know what the different territories are between the different groups of lemurs. That's a really great question. Thank you. And then let's head on over to um, Miss Heather Taub's class from Indiana. Do you guys have any questions? Let's see. I think you guys are good to go. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Avery. Do the lemurs like fish? Do the lemurs like fish? I don't think lemurs like fish. I think that oh. lemurs um, actually really enjoy fruit. Um, Kath, zookeeper Kathy was talking earlier today about how 75% um, of a lemur's diet is actually fruit. And a lot of the other things that they'll eat are leaves and sometimes insects or small bugs. Um, if you know, they can't find the fruit that they want, um, or if they want a little bit of variety. But I don't think that lemurs like to eat fish very often. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> and sorry again, everyone, about um, the technical difficulties and um, Zookeeper Kathy's mic. We're hoping to fix that soon. Otherwise, feel free to ask all of your questions on our Google Plus page, um, or like I said, on Twitter using the hashtag LemurHOA. And um, we'll connect with Zookeeper Kathy and get her to answer all these questions um, later on. But let's jump over to uh, Jessica Craig's fourth grade class over in North Carolina. Do you guys have any questions um, that I might be able to answer about lemurs? Can't quite hear you guys yet. I wonder if your microphone is working, because you guys should be unmuted. Hmm. If you guys actually want to go ahead and ask a question using the chat feature, Jessica Craig, if you're able to, to type in um, your student's question, then we might be able to answer it that way. But while we wait for that question, let's jump over to, um, back over to Amber's class. Um, and I wonder if Amber has any questions from her class. Good morning. Good morning. We can hear you guys. Awesome. We actually had two different questions this morning. Okay. Um, one of them was, what would be the size of an average sized lemur? Okay. And the second question was, how many miles per hour can lemurs move? How fast, quickly can they move? Oh, wow. That's an excellent question. And actually, you know, I don't know the answer to the second question, um, which is how fast lemurs can move. So I will definitely connect with Zookeeper Kathy um, later today and see if we can get the answer to that question and email you guys. And we'll definitely post some of these answers to our um, Google Plus page as well. Um, and I'm looking up really quick the average size for a lemur. It looks like 
a ring-tailed lemur, which is pretty common um, and about the same size as a red rough lemur that was on camera today. They are, um, on average, about five to seven pounds, and they grow to be about two feet tall. And I think that takes away, um, that doesn't count the tail. And that tail, um, as zookeeper Kathy said, can be very long. Um, so, yeah, ring-tails are about two feet tall um, and about five to seven pounds, and it looks like, on average, they live anywhere between 16 to 20 plus years, um, so they can live a pretty long time if they're in a great habitat. All right, well, thank you. You are welcome, and it so looks like zookeeper Kathy can hear now, correct? Perfect, although we can't hear you now, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, so like I was telling everyone, um, with the technical difficulty, we'll just connect later today and kind of go over some of the questions and make sure that they get answered on our Google Plus page. Perfect. Um, so I think that's all the time that we have now. Oops, that looks like um, just someone from Jessica Craig's class was asking how big the biggest lemur can get. Um, and zookeeper Kathy was talking about the largest um, size. <laughs> and it looks like, I would say that's probably about three feet tall. Um, so that's an excellent question. Um, and we will try to get more in-depth information from her um, later today about that. So. That was excellent. Um, let's go ahead and see if, I think that's all the time we have for today. And with the technical difficulties, like I, again, like I said, again, sorry about that. We'll get all the questions answered. Um, but definitely feel free to come out and visit the Minnesota Zoo or your local AZA Zoo and check out their lemur exhibit. Um, lemurs are amazing animals. Um, and you can always learn more about them at mnzoo.org. Um, and actually, I just got an email from our partners at IMAX that if you are in the Minnesota area, so sorry to those who don't apply, but if you're in Minnesota and you go to the Great Clips IMAX Theater here at the Minnesota Zoo, their Facebook page, um, which is facebook.com slash Minnesota dot IMAX. Um, they're doing a contest later today with trivia about lemurs and you can win passes actually to go and see lemurs or the island of lemurs Madagascar 3D. So that's a pretty cool um, contest. So if that applies to you, feel free to go check that out. Once again, it's um, facebook.com slash Minnesota dot IMAX. Um, and if you enjoyed the experience today hanging out with us, we're really excited. We have so many cool things coming up. Um, we have a Big Bugs Hangout that we're going to be doing next month um, for our new Big Bug exhibit here at the Minnesota Zoo. And uh, we also have a really cool program um, that you can go ahead and check out at mnzoo.org. It's for more distance learning options, um, interactive video conferencing, all of that stuff. Um, we have a really great program with lots of different topics. Um, so definitely go check that out at mnzoo.org as well. As you can see, I've lemurified my cube a little bit um, for this hangout. So thanks again for everyone for joining. Um, and definitely stay tuned. Um, check us out on Google Plus, um, plus MN Zoo. And um, we'll connect with you guys later on more great lemur questions and more great hangouts um, in the future. So thanks, everyone. We will see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>